in the 70th National Film Awards, Malayalam cinema won big and best with six accolades. Out of these, three are for the movie Atam the Play, directed by Anand Egashi. Atam won best feature film, best editing and best screenplay. And out of these two National Film Awards were backed by Saudi Velakya CC 225-2009, directed by Tarun Murthy. And then we have the Best Child Artist Award for Sripath for the movie Malikapura. And post-COVID, Malayala movies are getting a lot of national attention, despite being mostly non-commercial. How and why? And coming to the Malayala movies that gained the Best Feature Film Award, Atom, though it didn't grab the attention the way it expected, unfortunately, it gained only nifty reviews among the watchers. And what made the Malayalam movies to gain recognition nationally, even with its regional-based contents? To discuss more of this in detail, we have Ashwin Bharatwaj, popularly known as Lensman among the followers and fans, and Vishal Manan, the celebrated entertainment journalist. Welcome Ashwin and Vishal to India Today So South. It's such a pleasure to have you both with us. Thank you, Meera. Hi, So, hope you both have seen the big win uh, that the Malayalam movies got in the National Awards today. Uh, what's your thought, Vishal? I think overall, it's been a, a peaceful announcement compared to uh, the last couple of years. I think uh, apart from a couple of, uh, you know, a, a couple of people who had some kind of reservations about certain awards, I think generally it's been, it seems more fair. It seems... Uh, understandable that um, a, a movie like Artem won so many awards and uh, I think uh, overall pretty non-controversial compared to previous years. You uh, might have like felt the same or what you actually felt after watching this all these you know six awards only for Malayalam. Yeah I mean I'm really happy that Artem got so many awards because uh, some way it deserved the kind of recognition on, on a box office level also, you know, uh, unfortunately, the whole uh, Malayala movie thing that is happening right now on a pan India level, Atom didn't uh, really get the chance to be in that juggernaut. So right now, it's getting all these recognition. I mean, I'm really happy for Atom. <laughs> I ever felt like, you know, this is such a big, big win will happen. And uh, all of the, the all these you know, six awards, not just Artem, but even for Saudi Velakya for that matter, all these mm -hmm. six awards for that three part child artist, <laughs> everything was yeah, you know, yeah. gives a lot of happiness after so much of chaos uh, happening in the state. <laughs> so that is yeah, also yeah. there. And then coming, even Vishal, I think uh, this right now Malayalam cinema is in its golden era, like a never seen before kind of time we are into. What's your thought on this? Because I feel like it's such a big news for us. Uh, I think uh, I think we're forgetting uh, uh, generally when we were discussing Malayalam cinema at the end of 2023. Generally, the the consensus was that it was one of the worst years in the last decade or so. Uh, ever since we talk about the new generation or the new wave in Malayalam cinema, you kind of feel like it it kind of petered out in 2023 and it's with the first half of 2024 that you feel like oh everything is back and everything is uh, worthy of being celebrated again and I think it all started with Atom because I think it was one of the first movies that released this year and uh, apart from uh, the fact that it's not just a Kerala phenomenon you can understand from the way that uh, you know the movie became so celebrated when it came on Amazon Prime. Uh, not just the success that it got in theatres in Kerala, but then there was a second wave of people, you know, non-Malayalis who were super interested in uh, Atom when it released on OTT and then uh, the, the messages, you know, the tweets that were all about a movie like Atom. And uh, what is uh, what is so heartening about a movie like Atom is, is that even if you don't care about the politics or even if you are not really concerned or looking at it as an art movie, it's still a pretty good thriller. So uh, that's what I think uh, the magic has been with Malayalam movies. Uh, it has messaging, it has layers, it has great content. Uh, but beyond all that, I think it's managed to become entertaining to a wider uh, group of people and not just Malayalis. Right, right, right. Uh, 
so the thing is you know even uh, to you visha uh, ashwin actually because what i hear most commonly is you know malayalam they say what the other non malayali audience says malayalam movies are considered as intellectual movies like it's not like always you know a, a movie for a no brainer kind of thing but but still it it, it is widely accepted how what what's your thought on this because have you ever felt the same because we never uh, go for only commercial movies or movies that only uh, you know get a big acceptance in outside kerala as well what have you I thought about you're... this concept like intellectual movies kind of thing ashwin no we are not deliberately making intellectual movies or something i think there is an evolution happening within the industry and uh, or you know the way people react to certain films so if that particular film is working in the box office so eventually uh, movie makers are also thinking that yeah we can push the envelope so uh, there is confidence in the filmmakers to create something like a brahmegam which is completely black and white it has you know uh, it has no conventional norms attached to it uh, it's a uh, no other industry can confidently make such a film so uh, i think even our stars are looking for scripts that are you know like uh, kind of in weird or interesting in some ways so that they are not uh, you know doing the same role again and again nobody wants to be repeating themselves they need challenging stuff so i think that's the case with malayalam industry and again to ashwin uh, how do you feel malayalam cinema turned around you know its limited market size and restrictive budgets and converted them into you know creative advantages like and also they keep making films that find newer audiences all the time even i think vishal you can answer but i don't uh, um, i don't uh, totally agree with that uh, because i think uh, what we are sensing of course compared to malayalam cinema from 10 years ago or 20 years ago now there is a market outside now there's an audience now there are people who are really interested in malayalam cinema but it's a very cinephilic uh, very uh, what do you call it a limited crowd and it feels like everybody's talking about malayalam cinema because it fe- it's it's uh, exactly the kind of uh, eco chambers that we belong to you know like as journalists and you know as uh, like people who are on social media we are only interacting with uh, uh, people who are like us who cl- seem to think this about uh, malayalam cinema you know if you actually look at uh, tamil or telugu uh, and you go to you know there are these channels called gold mines and all that okay basically they are uh, they dub uh, th- tamil and telugu movies into hindi the views those movies get even flop telugu movies flop tamil movies get 100 million views 150 million views consistently which is not something even if you look at which is the biggest blockbuster i think in in terms of a movie that traveled outside kerala the biggest hit i think in the last decade or so has to be avesham you know even even comparable to bangalore days and premam and all that but even avesham in terms of the number of people who would have seen it in the indian heartland i, I don't think it's much the metros people would have seen it i think there's a, a reasonably big audience uh, uh, in delhi bombay calcutta all that i agree but it is nothing compared to the views of even regular telugu dubbed uh, movies get in you know uh, uh, up and bihar and you know himachal pradesh and uttarakhand so we are getting there it's a good thing but uh, i don't think it's as big as we think it is also so what is actually happening to malayalam movies at the same time because we are doing our max let's say art jivitham for instance it made i mean the mo- maximum voice that it can right from let's say post covid because i remember yeah. uh, prithiraj putting um, his transformation or even blessy giving updates then and there then even then coming to other states like outside kerala uh, even uh, after the release of rg vidham i remember people asking me like how is it working in there in uh, bangalore because uh, we feel like it's somewhere going like a very cold uh, running it's happening there in outside kerala but it does make uh, noise of course among the you know other because as it got released in other languages as well but my concern is you know a movie let's say like uh, gur or any other malayalam very regional very uh, normal commercial normal movies that are not much commercially uh, promoted i think there are uh, people still think that okay is it worth watching but at the same time if 
వెరీ ఆర్ అ బిలో యావరేజ్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ తమిళ్ తెలుగు మూవీస్ కమింగ్ టు అన్ ఓటీటి ప్లాట్ఫామ్ ఆర్ ఈవెన్ అన్ బిగ్ స్క్రీన్స్ ఇన్ కేరళ పీపుల్ స్టిల్ బిలీవ్ దట్ యూ నో ఓకే వీల్ వాచ్ ఇట్ విల్ ట్రై అట్లీస్ట్ దేర్ ఆర్ సమ్ యాక్టర్స్ దట్ వీ లవ్ టు వాచ్ ఆర్ మేబీ బట్ దెర్ ఇస్ సమ్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ మిస్అండర్స్టాండింగ్ ఐ ఫీల్ అమంగ్ ది ఆడియన్స్ ఇన్ ఆల్ దీస్ స్టేట్స్ వాట్ యూ ఫీల్ అశ్విన్ ఆన్ దాట్ actually right now the state of theaters is really uh, like really bizarre like uh, the contrast is it's not like how you said uh, people here are willing to watch a relatively low buzz tamil film uh, it's either if you if your movie has a good buzz there will be a lot of people coming for it if and if the word of mouth is great uh, it will grow exponentially and if there is no buzz it will be on the lower side and if the reviews and word of mouth are really bad the current scenario is like that you know, on the first monday itself the movie might be out of the theater <laughs> so uh, it's a very um, contrasting scenario like you get a either get a big hit or it's a super flop that medium level hits we used to get uh, before covid that's not happening right now and a lot of filmmakers who are planning uh, like yeah our uh, movie will uh, do an average box office will do this much number in the ott or satellite uh, the movies are the, that are planned like that that are actually getting bombed in the box office right now thing because malayalam films have always been known for its you know realistic cinema uh let's say after covid again hmm. have you also felt the same ashwin because uh, can also can we talk about the new wave of malayalam filmmakers uh, who are experimenting with contemporary themes and ideas of all stripes because who are the stand out for you ashwin i mean the thing is uh, the pandemic really exposed our content to a lot of people Uh, like the if you uh, look at the national level youtube reviewers and all everyone is trying to explore the filmography of people like uh, farhad fasil nivin poli or whoever and and the, there is a problem with that they are not acknowledging the uh, flop films we make it uh, the the way malayalam movie, uh, film industry is projected in front of other people is like we make only great films every week <laughs> so that's really a problem we have a share of flops and all even in this year if you look at it the uh, atom is a i mean atom is an unfortunate example like it was a great film that didn't really work in the box office and after premalu there was a uh, there was a lot of back to back hits yeah there was a lot of back to back hits and then we also faced a slump you know uh, after they like, say uh, it was in may i think after may from june onwards uh, there are no big hits uh, in malayalam as well so <laughs> if you look at Last malayalam cinema as was actually yeah. test of time for the malayalam industry as well because soon after all booms all success because i remember hmm. people coming back and saying now what's happening over <laughs> uh agree with what ashwin just said because to some extent i also felt like it's mainly because of the uh, movie reviewers uh let's say like um, ashwin uh, coke or all these shazam all these influencers slash reviewers we have in kerala is it because of them that these kind of small movies are also working to some extent no i think Ash- i think what ashwin meant was uh, the the i mean um, the malayali reviewers who uh, yeah the reviewers who take the movie outside the state uh, okay, yeah the st- uh, regional uh, influ- uh, reviewers we have there in kerala because i have seen I many people commenting the below their reviews saying you know it's because of you i have uh, yeah ashwin yeah i mean uh, i was mentioning about the uh, like uh, the reviewers and all from uh, north india and all who are like exploring the filmography of our current stars and they are like uh, they are giving this uh, 
they are uh, telling their uh, followers that this many super uh, these not just see you soon or avesham he has done other works as well like that has been happening during the pandemic i mean after uh, so pandemic has helped malayalam cinema in that way like fahad fasil is a big name um, he has not even done a bollywood film and even without that fahad fasil is a huge name that and a, a fair share of credit goes to these influencers or reviewers who are outside uh, in uh, kerala who are talking about these films but uh, at the same time when they are just picking the only uh, the great ones there is this illusion that we are making only great films we also have a fair share of problematic films right right even uh, to you uh, vishal because uh, when it comes to artem i just don't want to only mention about artem but again uh, since it gets grabs such a big win unexpectedly because even for the makers it was like a oh what's this happened what is happening like that so uh, even for artem also why i mentioned about all these uh, influencers slash movie malayalam movie reviewers right from uh, kerala i think to some extent they also help uh, to to get, you know promote this movie in their own way even by just reviewing this last day i was watching one of their uh, some review which the mo- movie was not much known there uh, somebody commented saying it's because of you we are knowing about such small movies which are also nice or even which are not mm-hmm. that great also i remember the apupan and the boys uh, ananda padmanabhan him also and, and after coming with so much of reviews which we haven't even seen they are like oh it's because of you we are even no hearing about the names at least so somewhere at some point uh, even after all this attention there is some gray that is happening to the malayalam movies when it comes to promotion or knowing outside the state so i think even the influencers uh, the reviewers have such a, a big uh, you know part in playing such a, you know for all these promotions what do you think vishal no i 100% agree uh, in terms of uh, i think more than Uh, if you take a look at the views that these reviews get right uh, some of the reviews uh, they get so many views that uh, of course people are watching the review as a entertainment in itself it doesn't really have anything to do with the movie especially when it's uh, like as an example when people watch the reviews of a uh, dhyan shrinivasan movie and all that they probably not even registering the title or the name or the story or anything of the actual movie but they just want to have fun watching certain reviews because it's almost like watching a roast right so uh, that is of course there but uh, beyond that when people are watching reviews when people are kind of taking note of a particular movie more than if it's good or bad i think they're somehow making a calculation of uh, of whether this is a movie i should watch in the theater or this is a movie i should watch in the ott so when it when you talk about a movie like artem i think everybody's registered that there is a movie like this playing in the theaters and that it's a great movie but everybody is also consciously taken that decision to watch it when it comes on ott also so of course the reviews are contributing to this but somewhere that calculation is happening and it's constant yeah if, so if you were or you still are in this uh, field for let's say past so many years over a decade but in these past few couple of few years again uh, after 2020 what is one thing that you felt like uh, that is majorly helping malayalam movies to go out apart all these the kind of uh, promotional uh, ways they uh, the movie makers have taken 100% uh, i cannot uh, explain this enough but it's just something as simple as subtitles that's all nothing more than that you know because our movies are not the kind of movies that will translate very well uh, there is no real money in uh, dubbing it and releasing it in other states because dubbing generally is considered to be like a, a b center c center or crowd you know the the kind of people that you spend money to dub movies for is the masi crowd we never had that we never had uh, malayalam movies getting dubbed to the quality that it deserved so dubbing was never a question for malayalam cinema so subtitles is what saved malayalam cinema in that sense you know the fact that we have subtitlists like vivek ranjit you know people like that who are like who do a good job of subtitling and the fact that uh, people are willing to watch it 
yeah you have to realize that the same crowd of uh, you know people who love malayalam cinema are people who love uh, money heist you know uh, german series you know and korean korean dramas you know that's the crowd that we have it's not the act- actual mass that can contribute to a thousand crore malayalam movie or anything of that sort it's a niche market that that has grown because of subtitling great subtitling and that's the difference that we've seen and of course you have to thank uh the internet boom and how it's very easy for anybody to discover any uh malayalam cinema easily and even through piracy for for instance you know so it's for in my opinion it's 100% the subtitling uh, uh vishal how do you think how much is these uh, you know uh, releasing in other languages multi languages is helping the movie to go let's say national because you, just now you mentioned vishal uh, it's the subtitling for 100% but also how much let's say a movie that is very regional based movie it's uh, let's put manoradangal for instance i was thinking when after watching the whole nine episodes i was just thinking okay uh, one movie sherlock fine it can connect to the other audience as well but what about uh, movies other all na- eight episodes how it can connect to the uh, other audience uh, across the other you know in, in other states when they can't even connect with the content the subject that is being discussed there what actually can make them feel like okay this series this anthology series a big win or it's must watch uh, the first couple of days uh, i'll give you an example of uh, another uh, i mean i i can't really think of any malayalam anthology that has really gone uh, pan india i don't think that has happened yet i don't even think there has been a Uh, a super hit anthology from malayalam uh, it's always been the case you know there are about three or four movies that people talk about the remaining five or five or six movies uh, are not well reviewed that's generally the case with all anthologies but i'll give you the example of uh, a movie like manumal boys okay i saw manumal boys first day first show in chennai and there were four people in the theater uh, and uh, you have to understand that manumal boys i think until last week was the biggest hit in tamil nadu overall even if you include tamil movies manumal boys is the biggest hit in tamil nadu but the first day had only four people in the theater so it's definitely have has to do with uh, word of mouth and the kind of word of mouth where people feel like okay this is our movie uh, it it's not it's not it's not just enough that the movie is okay then what about 2018 2018 was an industry hit right but it's not a movie that really translated outside the state now somehow people couldn't connect connect to that particular issue or that particular uh, history of uh, what happened in kerala but then with manumal boys within the week uh, if you go to a theater in chennai there are probably only 10% malayali audience it was only tamil audience and that has happened only with three or four malayala movies before so it's very seasonal it has to be very specific to a particular movie and the state where it works because manumal boys didn't work that well even in uh, karnataka or uh, maharashtra right it was only tamil nadu so it's very movie specific and uh, it, the kind of word of mouth that the movie generates and how fast it kind of goes viral you know on social media right because i remember uh, sridha uh, sridha play so telling uh, it's only through the word of mouth that actually worked and even it helped many other theaters that was that actually planning to close shut down you know make a big win for them as well financially they were literally struggling and it was just this movie that actually made them stand in that in the industry or in the business so that was always there but yeah. uh, ashwin to you uh, because uh, over a period i was thinking what, even for you also even after reviewing what actually you know uh, how do you feel when uh, malayalam movies are taking let's say a same kind of uh, subject same line of graph uh when it comes to storyline and everything because uh what's next have you ever felt like what's next for malayalam cinema as in uh okay these many uh let's put gur or let's say, uh, the little hearts movie there is one movie called little hearts direct um start in the lead role we have babura sir uh, shane mm-hmm. and all uh, it was again i don't know yeah. if it was a very widely spoken movie in kerala as well but when but it's a very regional uh movies which is very much subjugated to the uh, state let's say even for that matter that particular district you know how it's beautifully yeah. taken and everything but after a point when 
द सब्जेक्ट्स आर रेपिटेटिव और इवन लेट्स से इवन द सिनेमाटोग्राफी स्टाइल इज बीइंग रेपिटेटिव हैव यू एवर थॉट ओके वेयर इज मलयालम मूवी गोइंग और व्हाट्स देयर नेक्स्ट स्टेप सी देयर इज ऑलवेज दिस एक्सॉस्शन पॉइंट फॉर एवरी ट्रीटमेंट लाइक इफ यू गो ऑन मेकिंग like indie kind of subject there was this uh, thing about uh, realistic films when shyam pushkaran and all came and we had those beautiful films after a point people were calling it like pragriti we had enough of it like uh, so after that then came some subjects that uh, that are like balancing both if you uh, look at a movie like manimal boys it's not completely unrealistic or something but at the same time it has its uh, element of emotional uh, you know the way it plants the idea of god all this uh, fantasy I, mean, i wouldn't say fantasy the placement of drama is there so for the audience uh, every if you uh, try to make something a pattern after a point they will start to say that okay now they are doing this only so after a point you will have if, if you look at the success of uh, mo- uh, the movies that were successful they are not necessarily um, completely realistic or something uh, there are creative liberties you know all those things even rg with them you can see that they are using the visuals to a great extent to convey the drama and all so uh, that's why people are connecting to it so it's not like the treat so and why malayalam films work in that first quarter or something is because the variety uh, the industry was giving to the audience like you have premalu uh, releasing in february 8th the next week you have brahmayugam and then uh, next week you have uh, manimal boys and a month later you have rg jeevitham for uh, and after that you have aavesham and uh, varshangal vishesham so uh, there is nothing common between these things uh, these movies so uh, like if you can keep that variety rather than following or oh, this movie work then we will make another version of that then it won't work with malayali audience uh, the audience will call out like they are trying to repeat this they are, uh, so the rdx was successful now they are making an out and out action film because they think that people rooted for rdx simply because of the action there is an emotion that made rdx a hit like the way the guy insults the kid was the trigger point in rdx that's why everyone even the people who hates violence on screen were <laughs> rooting for the heroes because they Uh, they couldn't Correct. even take because i remember people. basil telling you know that the father in me <laughs> woke yeah. up so i couldn't even control myself yeah and just i vanished i all of them what all i could do i just did it <laughs> like that yeah. but then uh, so even uh, what do you think about when it comes to malayalam movies what's the big steps that they have taken uh, uh, so we have discussed about all this subtitling uh, releasing it in multi languages so from a reviewer perspective and from an audience perspective what you have actually felt uh, personally uh, the bi- for the big takes that malayalam uh, uh, for the malayalam movies or the recognition that we are getting in a, in a pan indian level actually uh, i was observing something about the lack of ott support Uh, for malayalam industry like if you look at the uh, amazon prime had this prime day thing happening uh, a few months ago and if you look at it uh, they were like announcing langu- uh, movies from languages like uh, tamil telugu hindi and kannada like uh, movies are in the production they are like post theatrical release will be in our platform so uh, that guarantee was there for bollywood uh, tamil industry telugu industry N- there was no malayalam movie in that list if you look at the prime day uh, the announcements they made so uh, when i asked this to uh, a few people in the industry now everyone knows that they are not buying the uh, buying our movies pre release uh, no contracts are signed or no sale is happening ott sale is happening 
before the release of the movie only avesham hap- uh, happened because it, i think it was a bundle deal or something with fast's production house so other than that even our blockbusters are getting uh, the ott deal after the theatrical window and the theatrical perf- based on the theatrical performance so that is actually in a way blessing in disguise like now the makers have to ensure that it work really well in the box of, uh, in the box office and even the ott platforms are observing what is happening in the theaters in order to buy these movies and the rates are kind of fixed based on the uh, box office performance of these movies so i think uh, that thing has forced malayalam cinema to rely on content only uh, they are not uh, looking for the dates or like uh, anything can work that, uh, that that safety net of ott is no longer there so only great content will work now and in a way that is helping the industry to be this unique among all the other industries like uh, other industries might also get the benefit if they don't have the, i mean they might also get better if they don't have the safety net of uh, the digital rights and all Uh, even i was thinking you know this time i think even for the state award as well we had many freshers g- uh, grabbing awards so slowly i think even it's a very uh, risky take even for the fresh bees even the new entries as filmmakers i think it will be a big challenging time for them as well in the future because you know every every time every month every when new releases comes in uh, people are coming up with completely different thoughts technically be technically story wise everything so what do you think if, even for the new uh, filmmakers that's coming in uh, in the industry what do you think what do you want to say them because both of you are watching the movies malayalam movies especially closely for over a decade now so i think you both can answer uh, i think we'll we'll start with vishal yeah so uh, that's the thing i mean like ashwin was talking about you know movie, movie like brahma yogam right uh, uh, that is of course the success of brahma yogam is one thing but uh, even if you talk about a movie like gaganachari you know uh, imagine like in a in a uh, in a imagine a, in a movie culture where you, you can make a super hit movie in the format of a mockumentary uh if you talk about any other industry and it's it's not even a concept it's not even a movie concept that you can uh, explain to people in other states you know like in other languages i remember there was an english hindi movie called the president is coming or something it came out in 2007 2008 uh it was the same mockumentary format but i think it got a release in six theaters or seven theaters across india so that is the state at, uh, at which those kind of films re- get a release outside kerala but a movie like a trippy post i mean when i'm explaining the story of gaganachari to non malayalis they think i'm uh, making it up you know they're not able to believe that a movie like a post apocalyptic mockumentary can become a super hit in a state like kerala so that's the, uh, the, the there is an audience for that even if you talk about you know uh, uh, like tallumala i think tallumala is now 2 years old i guess right tallumala yeah. so concept, movies like tallumala it's like uh, uh, people are watching it like okay this is something else we haven't seen anything like this uh, this is completely new uh, let's give it a shot and uh, experience it you know like let's have fun it's got enough entertainment for people to have fun when it comes to the theater but even if we don't get it the first time let's just give it a shot so it's a damn good time to be a filmmaker in malayalam you know like you I'm can't uh, Mal- come up with the malayali excuses. audience as well vishal because you know there when uh, gaganachari came out i was like okay now people are actually thinking people are actually ready to watch it discuss it i'm not just not talking about the people of current generation no people even in the 40s 50s they are like something of this sort comes in yeah but what's this something very new so yeah. people are also watching that movie even after watching let's say all the promotional interviews people are very much ready to watch it with a fresh mind with a plain yeah. slate that is where i also yeah. uh, you know realized okay people are changing the views the thoughts are changing which is very you know uh, something that's give, gives us such a happiness it's not like always yeah. it's not conventional uh, people are moving evolving over the time 
so that was also there vishal uh, such a happy uh, and a thought from our audience side again uh, before wrapping it up let me ask both of you uh, what's your feeling after all this what, what's your hopes for the next uh, you know the, in the coming malayalam movies even let's say 2024 big releases are coming i was just uh, telling ashwin before like at least four movies of vesal are coming in this month only in this month and this and that man is doing something big all the time <laughs> not even getting a time to talk or you know discuss about anything so what's your take on the upcoming movies what you actually uh, feel about the upcoming movies because we know as we all discuss we know where the malayalam movie is is been taking their route and everything so what's your take on that and with that we will wind up yeah. you can start uh, ashwin i think you can uh, answer it ashwin okay well we have some interesting movies lined up for onam i think uh, tovino's arm is it there it's in 3d he is doing triple role and it's been in the production for a uh, really long time like for vfx and 3d thing so i think uh, that's one movie i'm really excited about uh, i think and then uh, i don't know whether uh, jay surya's uh, film uh, kattana will be released yeah would release this year or not but that is also a huge step no 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 kattana he has been jaisuriya has not been doing any films for a long time right we have not seen him yeah he oh, has been doing seems that's what even the film yeah, house uh, have is, announced a big yeah. announcement after a year <laughs> yeah yeah so uh, kattana is one film i'm excited about then i mean in terms of uh, uh, trying something different or you know uh, expecting something different and these two movies are actually uh, kind of a litmus test because uh, i think it's the first time we are also trying the pan india thing in a very prepared way um rdg with them and all were you know kind of dubbed and released in other uh, states and all those stuff but i think arm and kattanar had the design of uh, from the pre production stage itself they had the plan to release in multiple languages and all so in a way that is also happening and i think lucifer uh, i mean empuran won't be releasing this year uh, so that's not there yeah in terms of the uh, expectations these two movies are the ones and with malayalam cinema you just can't um, say about the expectations because it will be the smaller ones that will spring a surprise um for an, like uh, right now right now nonakuri and wara are doing great at the box office and nobody was expecting it to do this well i mean we were like it will be a feel good normal uh, film kind of thing but extra shows are being added right now so it's the smaller ones that can surprise so there are a, a lot of uh, like basis movies are there i think this month already one re- nunakuri released and then other three hmm. are releasing in wada he is doing a cameo no uh, uh, that just completed shoot i think it's not releasing any time soon that is there then again uh, not just basil's movie many other are coming daily like we will be seeing some or the other so even vishal to you also what do you uh, how what do you actually feel when you see all this and where do you see you know all the upcoming movies are flying <laughs> to yeah so generally especially after may after the summer vacations uh, quite like it's quite common to have uh, to see a lull in the malayalam cinema and the programming also is like that generally if you talk look at the movies that releases in june and july they, there won't be any high profile films there won't be any films with a lot of money riding on it a lot of expectations so generally the these two months are lean almost every year uh and it's good to see that it's back because it's a proper four day weekend right like you know thursday friday saturday sunday it's like a big weekend there are big movies and i think every industry uh so it's good that the two malayalam movies are doing well uh to see if that streak is com- continuing i think we'll only be able to understand after the onam releases you know i think like he said i think uh, um, uh, um, tovino's movie the 3d movie is going to release i think next month then there's going to be mamuka's uh, uh, bazooka then there's going to be baros baros i think is going to be an october release if i'm not wrong uh, so i think there are those big movies lined up for the second half like those 
uh, I mean, apart from Ardu Jeevitham, everything else was pretty much a surprise, right, in the first half of the uh, year. So all the big movies are sl- slotted for the second half, and I think those are the proper mass movies also that's going to come up. So I think still a, an exciting six months left, uh, I mean, uh, four or five months left in the year, and I think we'll have a chat maybe after that, yeah. <laughs> right. So yeah. I think that was a very uh, insightful uh, interaction with both of you. It was a great time having you both of us with us on live. Thank you so much Vishal and Ashwin to come online online with us with Inter Today So South in spite your despite your you know tight sh- schedule. So hoping to watch you both on screen more time like you know with your reviews Lensman I think people are like waiting for your reviews every now and then. It's like when you have put up yeah. the review they'll be like okay Lens- Lensman Lensman said this actually Think, yeah, this might be like this. So there is a like huge responsibility yeah, and expectation at the same time from your side. So hoping to come more. And Vishal, what's on your end? Uh, what's on your way? No, I've been taking some time off to read Ashwin's reviews. Uh, I'm going back and reading all his old reviews and learning a lot about cinema from him. Good See, Lord. I don't know. I shouldn't. Even again, Vishal said the same. Vishal support me, back me, and I'm not lying at all. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, both of you, Vishal and Ashwin. It was a great time catching up with both of you. Thank you, thank you so much. Yes, thanks thank so much. Thanks so much, Meera. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye, Ashwin. Bye. Bye. So that was uh, Vishal and uh, Vishal, the en- en- entertainment journalist, and Ashwin with us, uh, popularly known as Lensman. I just mentioned before. Uh, talking about why Malayalam movies are getting a pan-Indian acceptance or a recognition all of a sudden post-COVID. I think that was a very insightful uh, discussion with both of them. Had a great time. And this is uh, this is Mira Nair signing off from India Today So South. <laughs>